let's continue with proposition number four. So what are we trying to do here? Let ABC and DEF be two triangles. So let me label those. So ABC and DEF. Those are going to be our two triangles. Having the two sides AB and AC equal to the two sides DE and DF respectively. So AB is going to be the same as DE. And AC is going to be the same as DF. And the angle BAC equal to the angle EDF. So the angle BAC, so that's this guy right here, is equal to EDF. Those two are going to be the same. Now the claim is that I say that the base BC, this base BC, is also equal to the base EF, and the triangle ABC will be equal to the triangle DEF, and the remaining angles, namely this one over here, with respect to this one, and C over to F, that these angles will be equal to the remaining angles respectively, namely those which the equal sides subtend. Let's also note that there are three claims here. The first one is that the base BC will be equal to EF. That's the first claim. The second claim is that the, tr the triangle ABC is going to be equal to the triangle DEF. And the third one is that the angle ABC will be the same as the angle DEF. And ACB will be the same as DFE. Those are the three claims. Now, how does Euclid intend to prove this? He says, for if the triangle ABC be applied to the triangle DEF, so think of this as a sort of superposition, that we're going to take this and relocate it onto this triangle. And he says, if the point A be placed on the point D, so we're going to place A upon the point D, and the straight line AB upon D, so we're going to take the straight line AB and place it upon DE, then the point B, this point right here, will coincide with the point E, because AB is equal to DE. And then he says, AB coinciding with DE, the straight line AC will also co coincide with DF, because the angle BAC is equal to the angle EDF. So when we apply this triangle to the other one, AC is already given to be the same as DF, C will coincide with F, and there's really no other possibility since the angle is the same, so there's no way they could fail to coincide. And then what's our inference going to be? Well, it's going to be that the base BC coincides with EF. And why is that? For if when B coincides with, with E and C with F, so when B coincides with E and C coincides with F, if the base BC does not coincide with the base EF, then two straight lines will enclose a space. So they're going to enclose the space, which if you think about it, that doesn't make any sense if you have a straight line like so. These two points are coming from coincident. Those, those are overlapping coincident points. That would have to enclose a space if BC doesn't coincide with EF, and that's impossible. That inference that things which coincide are equal, that's common notion number four or axiom number four. And our next inference is going to be Thus, the whole triangle ABC will coincide with the whole triangle DEF. The whole triangle ABC will coincide with DEF and will therefore be equal to it. Same common notion number four. And the remaining angles will also coincide with the remaining angles. That is to say, angle ABC will coincide with DEF upon this superposition. And likewise, the angle ACB will coincide with DFE, and therefore those will be the same. So we have the equality of these two angles, and also of these angles. And those are the three claims that we set out to prove. And you'll probably have noted that in high school geometry, this theorem is often called the side angle side theorem.